You're good, Doc. Real good. But I know all the moves. I could squash you like a bug. Christmas has come early as we have a look at the new NECA toys, Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 2, Retro Cloth, Ricky Caldwell. Ricky is all grown up and ready to follow in the footsteps of his older brother, serial killer Billy Chapman. All he needs are a knife, a gun, some jumper cables, a car antenna, and a Santa suit, of course. The very first thing we'll do is figure out how tall Ricky Caldwell stands. We will overlook for the fact that they do have two different last names. We'll just ignore that. Taking the tape measure and putting it right to the very top of Ricky's head, the figure stands exactly eight inches in height, which in centimeters works out. Hold on, let me get to that. 20.3 centimeters is Ricky Caldwell. The figure comes with accessories, though not very many. Of course, I guess the main go-to, for me at least, when it comes to displaying him, is going to be his red-handled axe. This is a dual-bladed or two-ended, two-headed axe. You can see that they've put the bird edge, the sharpened edge of the, the uh, axe here, in almost more of a silver color, while primarily the head of the axe is mostly like a gunmetal dark gray. It looks good. It looks accurate to the way it did in the movie, and it's a little bit different than the one that comes included with Billy. We'll look at that in a second in some comparisons. Next, he comes with the very famous pistol. As Ricky proceeds down the walkway, the streetway there, dispensing what he believes to be justice to everybody around him, leading up to the infamous, of course, catchphrase, Garbage Day. Granted, he wasn't really wearing this outfit, and uh, pr potentially, fingers crossed, this isn't going to be the last time we see Ricky Caldwell. I'm all really about companies wanting to make the use this, the most use out of their existing molds. Being that we've already got technically a Ricky Caldwell head, I hope we will eventually get ourselves a garbage day release of Ricky Caldwell in his blue sweater. Just kind of throwing that out there. But he does come with his little pistol, and he also comes included with the supplied hand for also holding the pistol. The pistol fits quite comfortably inside the palm and is supported by the three fingers, the one other finger right around the area of the trigger. And again, he holds it quite well. That is, assuming if I actually had it attached to his socket. I'll show you that in a second. And last but certainly not least, he comes with his little hat, little Santa hat which he does wear slightly different. He wears it actually, let me, well, let me show you here. He wears it just on the back here so that the pom-pom is draped down and sitting and resting its way on his shoulder. The only thing I am a little worried about whenever it comes to anything that you're putting on a head, I worry that long-term putting that on, removing it, putting it back on, removing it, rinse and repeating, that the paint may eventually wear on the hair. That's the only concern I have. Again, the head sculpt is so fantastic. I hope we eventually get future releases of retro cloth Rickies. They could just create an entire line of retro, just call it retro cloth Rickies. You could have Ricky outside with the umbrella in the alleyway putting away garbage. He gets that one guy with the umbrella. You could have Ricky Caldwell in the movie theater watching the movie about the killer Santa Claus. And then, of course, we could have Garbage Day Ricky. Just a whole line of Ricky retro cloth figures. Just something to consider their NECA toys. Uh, that is all he comes with when it comes to his accessories. Now, of course, we have to do some, some comparisons. So we'll bring in his older brother. And we'll just move him to the side. Because, of course, you guys would want to see how does he stack up next to Billy. 
And there is it, there is Billy right there. In a more classic pose, I've kind of just got him holding the axe. What would be omitted here would be the headless snowman as he's walking his way up into the orphanage doorway. But uh, I love the fact that we got ourselves retro cloth Ricky and Billy, even though technically they don't share the same last name. I kind of really liked Caldwell more than I liked Chapman. If they had simply just called him Billy Caldwell, I think I would have been perfectly happy with that. By the way, just a quick look at the two different uh, two different face sculpts. One certainly is more crazier than the other. Ricky sort of has just a, a blank, emotionless stare on his face. You could certainly not say that for Ricky here on the right. Also, just to tell you as well that the uh, the hats are different from one another. They're not the same utilized hats. So it looks like they have changed a fair bit to these. Even like the jackets are not the same either. Ricky or Billy does not have the fur running down the middle of the Santa jacket, whereas uh, Ricky does here on the, on the right. Um, I think like the belts could be similar. Just a swap of paint is probably what's making them so different from one another. Pants also... Uh, Ricky's pants are a little higher because you see more of his boot in the movie, whereas Billy's uh, pant legs run a little bit lower. But again, there's the two head sculpts. Let's go ahead and just, uh, I'll just take the hats off just so you guys can see. Ricky's beard and uh, wig do not come off, but again, there's the two head sculpts right there. I think both are quite good. I've grown to love this one a little bit more than I did when I initially uh, opened him. I did feel like his face was awfully chalky. Still think it's a little on the chalky side. I would definitely be inclined to pick up the retail release, which is something that we avail finally have available in stores. So if you didn't get this guy, this one being the, uh, the pre-order that came with the Scream Factory release of Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, maybe just give it time. Don't uh, go scalping, don't go uh, to scalpers to pick this one up for yourself. Just kind of wait it out. If we got this guy in a retail release, we may very well get this guy in a retail release. Anyways, there's the two figures. We'll just move, we'll move Billy out of the way because we already had a look at him in a previous review. So let's have a look at Ricky. Now, one thing I'm sure anyone is probably asking, what does he look like underneath? I'm sure I probably would be asking if somebody else was reviewing this, what does he look like? Is he muscular underneath? Technically he is, but I mean, really, it's the same muscular body that they've used for all the retro cloth figures. Even some of the most non-physically uh, benefited characters still have the same muscular body underneath. Clark Griswold, for example, would still have the same body underneath. It happens to work surprisingly well for Ricky because Ricky was a muscular well, Eric Freeman was certainly a muscular actor, and one of the sole reasons why they actually hired him to play uh, Ricky Caldwell, it certainly was not for his acting, that's certainly for sure. Uh, now, he does have the Velcro, the Velcro does close up. Um, it does, unfortunately, mean that the collar and, like, the jacket as a whole rides up quite frequently to him, kind of making him look like he has no neck. His face sculpt is fantastic. I don't think I could have asked for a better head sculpt. I mean, granted, they could have given him like an angry mouth closed expression, but I think this one works rather well. It's funny, though, that they've omitted what appears to be no, there's no tongue from what I can see. There's maybe a tongue in there, but they've kept it so dark. I guess their biggest thing is they wanted to really just have it look as if he's crazy. Mission accomplished. Skin and the uh, the skin tone, I should say, is actually pretty good on him. They've given him a little bit of a, a stubble shaded effect there on the lower, well, the bottom half of his face. He definitely does look crazy. And really, it could lend itself to, if they really wanted to make use of this exact same mold, literally the exact same head sculpt mold, I would just simply repackage this guy with a brand new set of clothing and uh, you could just easily make him into Garbage Day Ricky, which then would lend itself right into making use of the pistol. Which, by the way, if you want to see how that works, I'm just going to roll up his sleeve, exposing the go-to of the retro cloth bodies, which don't change from any figure. They stay the same. And uh, we'll go ahead and just pop the hand in place. I just don't want to drop the pistol. There we go. And then we'll put the pistol in place. By this part of the game... By the time he is 
wearing the Santa outfit. I really don't consider him very often thinking of him wearing uh, with the pistol in hand. I usually just think of him with the axe, uh, of course, off visiting Mother Superior. But I'm glad that they did include the pistol. I just don't think for this version of Ricky, he should have come with a pistol. But, you know, it's always nice to have extra accessories to come include with figures. Uh, we've already looked at the head. Of course, there's his hands. His hands are sort of looking swollen, but I think a lot of that is just simply because the uh, the forearm is so narrow on this. Thank goodness that you've got the long enough sleeve of the Santa jacket, because it does kind of distort uh, the fact that he's got such a very thin frame underneath that. They could have also filled this guy up a little bit more. I mean, certainly he relies more on just having a muscular body, whereas Billy just simply had the extra padding of having a Santa's jacket on and a Santa's uniform on. The, this faux white fur uh, is very notorious for leaving these little fluffs all over his suit. So you see me picking these off over the course of this review. Again, apologies for that. Same sort of problem when it comes to the lower half of him. Just all these little fluffies come come quite frequently off of his outfit. And little threadings and stuff like that. There's always going to be something that you're going to need to fix to the figure. And more or less, it's just from a visually looking at. There's nothing really wrong with the, the body or anything like that. Speaking of, I guess, not really anything wrong with the body, they have hinges on the feet. Now, this is not something that's new to retro cloth figures, but it is new to the fact that he's got a bigger, bulkier boot, which so happens also to be the same boot that Billy had. Same exact boot, it's just the fact that the pant legs are, uh, well, covering a little bit more of it. I still would love to see NECA Toys eventually dismissing the peg joint the pin joint altogether and giving us instead a ball joints something you know that has a little bit more stability to it because unfortunately with these feet you can't angle them back and forth you're always relegated to moving them up and down and that's really it and there's always that that sense that the feet are more on an angle than they are flat this can cause some problems when it comes to the figure standing luckily though he doesn't have any problems standing Let's go through and run run through his posability. His head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down, and in some regards, it also hinges back and forth. Now his arms hinge out. It's nothing really new to these. This is the cis retro cloth figures as a whole. The arms move out. You can move them forward. You can move them back. You can swivel at the basically where the elbow attaches. There's a swiveling joint right there, and then you can also swivel the hands. Um, he does have no waist swivel, not that I can, well he does have a waist swivel, just a little bit tight on the tight end. Forward and back on the legs, split on the legs, he has a swivel on the three quarter cut of the thigh, he has a bend at the knee, and as we've already looked at, he has a hinge in his foot. I guess he does come with the sufficient amount of posability that you would expect. Um, I personally would love to see these guys also get seven inch a plastic treatments like an ultimate version of Billy and an ultimate version of Ricky. The chances of that happening are likely slim to none. NECA toys usually, as you can always bet on, NECA will venture into different territories of giving us unique characters from movies, but it usually comes at the price of it being retro cloth. For them, really, they're only needing to sculpt a brand new head the body can really stay the exact same and then they're just going to have to come up with fabric fabric on an outfit surprisingly enough is a lot cheaper than having to cast a brand new mold tooling new molds is really where the costs uh, get eaten up by companies when they produce their figures so for NECA toys it's a safe bet when they produce retro cloth figures because there's a really a whole lot less that they have to do to make the figure Yes, it may not be garbage day, but it certainly is a good day for fans of Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2. Not only do we finally get the long overdue, well-deserving Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 on Blu-ray, thanks to the folks over at Scream Factory, but we also get ourselves a retro cloth version of Ricky Caldwell, thanks to the folks over at NECA. I think I like this one a little bit more than I liked Billy Chapman. Billy Chapman is iconic, but there's something to be said about Eric Freeman's over-the-top acting in Silent Night, Deadly, Deadly Night Part 2 that makes this figure I think a little bit better than its previous release. 
The only thing that kind of disappointing is for the fact that we don't get alternate clothing. Maybe this is something that NECA could entertain with future released figures. I mean, really, they could release one figure with various different clothing. The idea that you would dress up or dress down your character to whatever look you want to have him in. At the very least, NECA Toys now has a workable uh, head sculpt of actor Eric Freeman and Ricky Caldwell that really we could get future releases. Hope you're listening, NECA. Future releases, maybe we eventually may get ourselves the blue sweater wearing, gun, uh, gun toting, a garbage day yelling Ricky Caldwell. I would certainly love to get ourselves a garbage day release of Ricky Caldwell, so FYI, NECA Toys. In the meantime, if you guys were interested in picking this one up for yourself, I don't know if the uh, available stock is still there. You may want to swing on over to Scream Factory's website and see if you can still order this. Uh, with the set, I've already done the unboxing in another previous video. The unboxing came with the Blu-ray, which was good. It came with a poster, which was okay. And of course, you got yourself the retro cloth version of Ricky Caldwell. The only other thing you could do is source this guy out online or hold out hopes that much like Billy Chapman, who eventually got himself a retail release, we may very well get the same sort of release with a Ricky Caldwell. Maybe NECA could even do a garbage day version of Ricky Caldwell as the retail release, keeping the pre-order version of Ricky Caldwell in the Santa suit. There's some possibilities right there. Either way, a great looking figure. Definitely makes me inclined to go and watch Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, which unfortunately I didn't get a chance to watch yet this year. I started kind of watching the beginning of it to see how the Blu-ray turned out. It looked fantastic, but I really haven't had a chance to sit down and enjoy Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, which rest assured will be something that will be, uh, will be in my Blu-ray player this year before Christmas comes around. Today, once again, we were having a look. This was the Scream Factory slash NECA Toys collaboration, and this was the pre-order Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 Retro Cloth Ricky Caldwell. Couldn't look any bit cooler other than maybe giving him an alternate blue sweater. Just FYI, NECA Toys. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other NECA reviews, or hey now, if you're still in that Christmas spirit and want to go back and have a look at some of my other Christmas-related videos, there's playlists for both of them. There's a playlist for Christmas spots. There's a playlist also for NECA toy reviews. So whatever you're fancy, there's a playlist for you. Make sure as well you swing on over to the home page and just scroll down. See if there's anything you may have missed along the way in the way of video reviews. And certainly a lot more reviews will be coming your way this holiday season. And even though we only have a couple more days left. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. And I'll see you next time.